I fell in love with using solar panels last year when I used them to power a 2400 mile section hike of the Continental Divide Trail. On that hike, solar panels allowed me to be way more self-sufficient and I had what felt like unlimited power. In this video, we're going to cut through mountains of technicalities and nuances in order to answer the question, are solar panels worth it for your backpacking trips? To start off, we need to figure out the amount of power that we can get from the alternative to solar panels, which is a power bank. Generally, we can expect the power bank made by a reputable brand to deliver roughly 65% of its rated capacity to the battery that is charging. What that means is if you have a power bank that's rated to 10,000 milliamp hours, then it'll have just enough power to charge a 6,500 milliamp hour battery. Of course, a power bank can be significantly more efficient, but 65% is just the rough real world efficiency. Most of the factors that affect the efficiency of your power bank are gonna be out of your control, but the one factor that you can be easily in control of is the type of cable that you use. Generally, a short, high-quality cable is gonna be much more efficient than a long, cheapo cable. If you're one of those people that use one of those 10-foot-long gas station cables with your power banks, there is something seriously wrong with you. On average, the weight of a power bank from a reputable brand is about 1200 milliamp hours of rated capacity per ounce. In effective capacity at 65% efficiency, that's gonna be about 780 milliamp hours per ounce. Moving on to represent solar panels, we're gonna be using the Lixada 10 watt panels. I'm sure that you could build or maybe even buy solar panels that are significantly lighter, but when you take into account cost, accessibility, usability, and durability, the Luxada panels are, as far as I know, the best solar panels on the market. The biggest problem that solar panels have is their ability to deliver power to your devices is gonna vary drastically based on the different combinations of cables and devices that you use and different environmental conditions. Power banks do also suffer from these variations in efficiency, but not nearly as badly. In ideal conditions with a setup that's functioning properly, you could expect the Luxada solar panel to deliver an average of about 0.75 amps of current at five volts to your devices. In other words, 750 milliamps. On these Luxada solar panels, I cut off the handles and they weigh 3.22 ounces each. Using all of that information, we could use this formula to roughly calculate the milliamp hours per ounce of a Luxada solar panel. If you plug those estimates that I made into the formula, this is what it looks like. This chart represents the average amount of current that a power source can deliver to a battery under optimal conditions based on its weight. The thing that I think is really interesting about this chart is if you don't think that my estimations are accurate, or if you just think that your numbers are a little different, then you could tweak the numbers a little bit and the chart's gonna be basically the same. According to my estimations, if you're on a three and a half day trip and you're only able to use your solar panel in optimal conditions for one hour per day, it would still be lighter than a power Power bank. If you're going to be consuming a lot of power, then in most environments, it would be silly to go on a long backpacking trip without a solar panel. Well, at least on paper it would be. In reality, you gotta weigh your pros and cons. Like I said, solar panels are gonna be significantly less user-friendly because they can be kind of finicky to use sometimes. They're one more thing to worry about and they will not be able to deliver a consistent amount of power to your devices. But with solar panels, regardless of the environment that you're in, the more power that you consume and the longer your trips are, the more solar panels will start to make sense. 